Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome back to Death Mark 2. Previously, we completed Chapter 3, and now we're off to depart to Chapter 4. History of Konehari Academy. Found in an M Town by millionaire Genzo Konoe. Constructed a school building, old buildings completed. The clock tower is built to commemorate the school's 10th anniversary. Konohara Academy's first headmaster, Genzo Kone, passes away. During the Great H City Air Raid, which is a very important thing for this series, a firebomb is dropped in the school, but both the school building and the clock tower are miraculously left unscathed. 1955, school's address changes to the town's merger. 1958, Konohara Academy Student Council is launched. Construction of a new building, and special buildings are completed, and the old building is renovated. The clock tower stops working due to age in 1990. Old buildings officially shuttered in 1994. 70 years of history. There were likely some tragic incidents that occurred during those decades. Does anything here give me a hint as to the Departed's identity? Shibuto Keihai. Hmm. I closed the Konohara Academy brochure once I finished reading it. Then I take a sip of the coffee I brewed. It's been three days since the end of the Slipmouth Kashimo's case, and there's yet to be a new notice. In the interim, I've borrowed several documents from the school in a desperate bid to find any clues related to the Depard's identity. The investigation is not going so well. I feel like I'm treading water in the middle of the ocean, and I can't see the shore. Instead, my sense of uneasiness keeps growing and larger and larger. Time to get going. But Sakona called me in today, I better head to the school. I'm feeling much better today than I was last time, so I decided to take my car. After cresting the steep slope, and the snow grounds finally come into view. Mr. Conway has already left by the time I arrive at the faculty room. Without any direction, I decided to go to the infirmary. But just then, someone asked me to fill in for an absent teacher. Someone saw my butt. I'm still unused to standing in front of a class. However, I do, see my, <laughs> I do my best for being professional and struggle through it, teaching a lesson cobbled together from the stray bits of my knowledge. I know you just want me here for my sexiness. Um, can I ask a question? A female student timidly raises her hand. It's not really the lesson, though. It better not be about my butt. What is it? I heard you're investigating the Departed. Does the Departed really exist? Oh yeah. Uh... Of course not. Of course not. But they totally exist. Psst. The students see the collective sigh of relief at my reply. They're already frightened and stressed over the rumors of the Departed. I should make them feel any worse than this. Technically, if you tell them about the Departed, it probably goes stronger. I believe this is the right response. The chime signaling the end of class sounds. Say my goodbyes, I leave the classroom and walk toward the infirmary. School is over, time to start my investigation. None of the mark bearers will be here today, so I didn't tell anyone I was coming. If I just made this decision earlier, they'd all still be alive. I'm always one step behind. There's a corner I should be back by now. I better go to the faculty room. They all are still alive, though. No one in the infirmary. Notification line on my phone is blinking. Looks like I've got voicemail. I press the button to play the audio. Hello, it's me, Kashiwagi. How are things going with your investigation, Mr. Yashiki? I'm in Osaka right now for work. I'd like to come back and help as soon as I'm done. But sadly, I'm shooting a music video and then we have a concert after that. I'll be gone for at least a week. Sorry I can't be of much help. That reminds me, is Sho doing a good job? 
I asked him to help out in my absence. He's got good stamina, so I'm sure he's doing a much better job than me. I really wanted to be there to help you finish this thing. Such a shame, really. But give me a call if you ever need my help. I'll come flying to you. Bye-bye. That's the end of the voicemail. Hello, Yashiki. Sorry for making you wait. Has there been a new notice? No, I didn't call you because of that. I just wanted you to directly report your results in the Slipmouth Hashima case to me. Go ahead. I give him a general report about the Slipmouth Kashima case. It's also been decided that the broken glass and the dirty floor in the art room will be left as it is for the time being. I can't blame them considering the current state of the old building. I see. Just keeps getting worse, huh? Diamond's been attacked and the pirate's identity still eludes us. Are there any clues that could help unravel this mystery? I've been digging through some of the school's documents, but I couldn't find anything linked to the Departed. Mind letting me other documents of interest if you have them? I'm especially interested in the older ones. I've barely seen any, which is odd for a school that's got 70 years of history. Oh, I'm about that. I assume you've learned that our school was firebombed in an air raid during the war, right? Aside from the old building and the clock tower, everything was burned down. That included the building that stored the school documents. Even without the physical documents, you can always ask people who might recall the history you're interested in. Do you know anyone offhand who might remember? Let's see. If the previous headmaster was still in good health, they'd be a prime candidate. He was curious about Kona Arakami's past and did some digging on his own. Where is he now? He died of a heart attack last month. That's why he's the previous headmaster and I'm the current one. Oh, okay. Say, Yashiki, I want you to be completely honest with me. Are you confident you can solve this case? I am. Because if I don't, I'm kind of dead. I like that attitude. Just bear this in mind. There are only so many strings I can pull if people didn't disappear. I'll be held responsible for the fallout and you'll be removed from the case. To put it bluntly, our investigation won't be stopped. I'll remember that. That's all I wanted to say. Oops, there was actually one more thing. This morning, Doryu, the student council president asked me if you'd be coming to school today or not. Why don't you go see her? Both Doryu and Michiho are in the student council room when I arrive. Hello, Mr. Yashiki. Hi. Hehe, <laughs> thank you for the other day. Looks like Michio is fully recovered. She doesn't seem sick or dispirited. Mr. Kono, I said you're looking for me. Yes, yeah, so there's something I'd like to discuss with you. What about that tattoo thing? Though I don't feel like saying it myself. Michio, can you help? You're such a scaredy cat, Hime. Alright, take a look at this photo first. A picture's worth a thousand words. Ghost pool, baby? Michio shows me a photo of the pool at night. I have to say, the empty water at night is pretty eerie. And empty like my soul. Although there's a soul there. What is that? There's something pale floating above the water's surface. The photo's too blurry for me to make out what it is. It looks like the puffy swollen face of a human. I was the one who took this ghost photo. The swimming club came to us to share their concerns about the pool ghost. I stuck into the school a while ago and took this picture. That's literally trespassing. Oh, come on. Don't be so tight. I need to try and keep the student body calm. I still can't believe I managed to get the snap, though. My supernatural sense is truly something else. Michiho grins from ear to ear. Seems like she hasn't learned anything after what happened to her during Kashima's case. Are you telling me to investigate this spirit? Exactly. I've heard there have been a lot of strange incidents in the swimming club recently. If a spirit is behind those incidents, you have to do something about it before it gets worse. Do you mind investigating it for us? Sure. 
Yeah, why not? Thank you. Now tell me more about this spirit. Where should we start? Spirit's identity. Well, we still have no idea who the spirit is. Some say it's a girl. During club activities, some of the swimming club members said they heard a weird female voice. Some also claim that they saw a severed head at night, like the one in that photo. When the rumor started, or when, rather, I believe it started after the fuss around Takai died down. What fuss? Care to elaborate? Oh, you haven't heard about that? Kyoko Takai was the first known as victim. While she's said to be missing, the rumors say she was killed by Hanako of the toilet. She's talking about Ribbon. Now that I think about it, I never actually learned who Ribbon was. Her coach, she told me about Ribbon. She used to be in the brass band club of Izumi and the two of them bullied Hanako together. Well, yeah, I can't deny that. She was on bad terms with Akai ever since they were in first years. Did something happen between them? Oh, it was just Takai's personality. She was always an intention seeker. She'd form a clique and have him fawn over her. She really loved that. Akai was invited to join her circle one time, but she refused. Is that what turned the relationship sour? This is just a hunch, but... Izumi's bullying of Hanago might have escalated because he had Takai by his side. They had a shared bond of hatred. Takai was known for a flashy red ribbon. Everyone knew she wore it all the time, and she didn't care because it was given by her boyfriend, or so I'd heard. She really treasured that thing. When you touch the ribbon from behind for fun, she'd get really angry. Then her boyfriend... That's enough, Michiho. You're flying off on tangent now. Takai doesn't have anything to do with the pool case. Strange incidents. Or does she? When they're swimming, all of a sudden, they feel like they're being suffocated and almost drowned. That kind of thing has supposedly happened more than ten times. To which a coincidence, don't you think? That the spirit was trying to suffocate them with their curse. That's all we know. Please take care of the rest for us, Mr. Yashiki. I'll try investigating later at night. Right, I forgot. Wait there. Michelle writes something at her desk. Take this. See your number? This is the dorm's number, my phone number, yeah. Tell me if anything happens. Or any other time, too. Or if you're feeling- Yeah! <laughs> I called it. Or if you're feeling lonely, hee <laughs> hee. No, thank you. Jeez, Micho, don't be a weirdo. <laughs> I can't help teasing him, you know? He's way too serious, you know? I quickly leave the student council room, putting distance between myself and their cheerfulness. Damn cheerful teens. While waiting the next notice, the student council asked me to investigate a spirit haunting the pool. Several students report having odd incidents and nearly drowning, leading some to assume a spirit was involved. Before the incidents, a student Takai went missing. I also heard a voice at the pool. I spot a familiar looking boy while glancing over the spacious library. Once he noticed my presence, he immediately approaches me with a smug smile on his face. Is it rich boy? Well, well. Look who we have here. If it isn't Mr. Yashiki. And what's that smell? It's poor Spirit Hunter. Big congratulations to you for surviving the oh so terrifying slit mouth Kashima. I expect nothing less from the renowned Spirit Doctor. It's too bad you're poor. I was just lucky. I think so too, actually. Wow! Too, actually. You're blessed by the Goddess of Fortune. Unfortunately for Mr. Diamond, he couldn't escape his cruel fate. I heard he's hospitalized at K Hospital. You sure know a lot about my situation, don't you, Abe? Don't you think it's time you tell me what so sorts of tricks you have up your sleeves? Oh, goodness me. To think you would be interested in my secrets. I'm attracted to you, Spirit Doctor. No. And you're drawn to my mystery. We're basically meant to be. <laughs> I don't like this. dislike the sound of that. I do. Hey, don't dodge my question. How did you... What a silly question. I don't see any need to answer that. 
Don't you know? What makes a mystery fascinating and captivating is the fact that it remains a mystery. Let's keep our relationship this way. I'm in no mood to alter it. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me. I have some money to count. And some ghosts that I can see. With a chuckle, Abe leaves the library. I bet you're wearing contacts. I have no idea what to make of that kid. I doubt we'll ever understand each other. I feel like I'm talking to an alien. Turns out to be an alien. Is this what they call a generation gap? Bing bing wahoo. I step out of the library after a converse after that conversation, feeling rather frustrated. The school will be closing shortly. All students, please properly vacate the school grounds for today. I guess that's enough for my evening investigation. I return to the infirmary to prepare for the night's investigation. Might as well wait until the sun sets. Since I'm dealing with a spirit here, they should appear at night. Despite having no appetite, I forced down some cup noodles I bought my way here to replenish my energy. I top it off with a cup of instant coffee with extra sugar. As compared to the stuff I brew myself. Coffee is still coffee, though. It's a hot black drink chock full of caffeine and chlorogenic acid. Telling myself that, I gulped the drink down. The night is getting late. Time to head out. I've got a call. Who's it from? Hello? Good evening, Mr. Yashiki. It's me, Himiko Doryu from the Student Council. Why do you need to call me this late at night? There's something I want to tell you. Remember how earlier I said Takai had nothing to do with the pool case? Actually, it's the opposite. Yeah, yeah, I know. I think it's my first... ghost rodeo? Did you find out something? I asked one of the Takai's friends at the dorm. Turns out Takai used to be in the swimming club. Hang on. What is she in the brass band club? She quit the club after injuring herself during practice. After that, she joined the brass band club. But apparently she still often came to watch the swim club practice. I heard she asked one of her friends in the club to let her swim from time to time. Because of that, the swim club members kept away from her. It's some kind of like ghost circle ecosystem where a ghost kills someone, so they have regrets, so they become a ghost, and then they kill someone. So she just did her own thing. There's more, though. I don't know if it's related to the case or not. Right before she died, she apparently lost her ribbon in the pool. Didn't she love that ribbon a lot? Sounds like that women rough on her, huh? Yes, I heard she was flipping out. She searched all around the pool, the locker room, and the members' bags, but never found it. She was even saying she'd drain the entire pool if she had to. They were having a hard time stopping her. Did she find a ribbon in the end? Nope. And after that, the notice appeared. Doryu stops talking. I guess that's all there is to the story. Thanks. It'll help my investigation. I should be apologizing for troubling you. Please call Michiho if anything happens. She'll come flying. Anyway, have a good evening. I'm still not sure whether Kyoko Takai is connected to the pool case. Maybe I'll get a better understanding once I go to the pool. Takai was in the swing club before she moved to the brass band due to an injury. Rumor has it she was searching for the ribbon she lost before going missing. Ribbon, the first target, was Takai. If she's also this pool spirit, that ribbon might be the key to solving this. Pool. I leave the special building ahead to the pool. After a bit of walking, I arrive at my destination. The entrance is blocked by a low palisade, obviously given that the school hours are over, it's locked. I forgot to borrow the key. Gah! No choice but the bulldoze is my way through. Yashiki, you're weak. Put my feet on the palisade, I managed to shuffle myself over in one try. 
Yep, no ghost stories happen to pools like this at night. This is the pool in question. I'm not sure if a spirit will appear tonight. But let's take a look around first. There are many things around here. Where do I start? Each lane has a diving board. I find a small object in one of the diving boards. Tooth. Yush. Yush. There are some benches by the pool. Just by all the mold growing on them, these benches must be pretty uncared for. There's the mold thing again. Yush. Yush. There are benches by the pool with dead insects scared on top. There is the dead insects in again. The bucket and the floor brush have been left out. Did someone forget to put them away? Mm hmm? Hmm? I see nothing on the surface of the water. Certainly not a severed head. The water is cloudy and clumps of algae float atop it. I'm guessing no one's using the pool these days due to the incidents. What was that voice? Okay, that is just... right up front. Here we go. Who's there? Oh, come on. Please work. Weird. Aim a flashlight towards the source of the voice. There I spot a bloated goat that looks like a drowned corpse. It's such an awful sight to behold that I can hardly keep myself from looking away. Reminds me of Mermaid Swamp. Now that I take a closer look at her, She's wearing a Kona Harakami uniform. Judging by those hoses wrapped around her body, she looks like a victim of Hanako. Is this spirit of Kyoko Takai the missing person named in the first notice? Save me. Ah! I swear to get strange chills all over my body. Chad, I won't be able to endure this for long. Takai keeps saying save me over and over again. It's like she's begging for forgiveness. Hanako's no longer here, though. She can't forgive her nor save her. How do I save her now? The only things I can use at the moment are the bucket and the deck brush by the poolside. Bucket. Yeah, just scoop up the air. That'll, that'll do something. Scoop up that air. I try scooping up pool water with the bucket. Will you be safe if I do this? The guy's spirit stares at the pool, murmuring something in a relieved voice. I know this was just a dumb hunch, but maybe I stumbled on the right answer. Looks like this is the right choice. There. More. Did she say there more? I can say to do more to save this soul. Save me. I'm dying, Squirtle. I swear to get restrained chills all over my body. Damn it, what should I do? Bucket. Deeper water. Wait, Doda. Try putting the bucket deep in the water before scooping. The bucket's so deep in the water that it's quite full. I slowly lift it. I'm guessing she wants me to get the bucket deeper into the water when she says there more. In that case. How's that? I scoop deep like you wanted. Kai's spirit stares at the water inside the bucket. The ribbon? I follow her gaze and see something floating inside. What's this? It's a flashy red ribbon. I think I remember something about the Kai wearing a flashy ribbon. Is this what you've been searching for all this time? Looks like this is the right choice. I heard Kai disappear while she was looking for her favorite ribbon. She was probably killed by Hanako before she ever found it. Mm -hmm. 
That was an easy exorcism. Takai Spirit laughs happily as she disappears into the darkness. Survived. The grit that Takai's lost soul bore has been dispelled. She shouldn't appear here again. Let's go back to the infirmary. The spirit haunting the pools with Kyoko Takai, Hanako's first victim. Game Ribbon back allowed her to rest in peace. Takai bullied Hanako along with Izumi, which is why she was always a target. The Departed didn't show up during this investigation, so this might be unrelated to them. Hey, there's a ghost! This concludes the request investigation. Yet the nine is still young. What should I do next? That's clearly the departed right there. It's right there. For some reason, I feel a set of eyes on me. It's right in front of you. There's something on the other side of the window. <laughs> Was that the departed? Why were they here, though? I love you, huh? There's an unfamiliar item on the desk. This is great. The departed's notice. Dear student council, I will kill you tonight. I'm watching, hiding in the school. Your beloved the departed. I don't know. This could be like a red herring. Student. Student Council, did they meet Michiho and Dory? You, shite! What to do? First things first, I need to check whether they're safe or not. Better call them now. I take out the note Michiho gave me this evening, and then I punch in the number written on the paper. This is just to get me off the. Uh, Trail, isn't it? Michiho isn't answering. Well then, let's call the dorm and check if they're in the, the rooms. We're gonna arrive there and there's just gonna be like some kind of funny thing. Hi, moshi moshi. Moshi moshi. The languid voice of a middle-aged woman is transmitted to the receiver that is pressing against my ear. She must be the dorm manager. My apologies for calling this late at night. My name is Yashiki. I'm one of the teachers at Konehara Academy. Have Himiko Dori and Michiho Kunakawa return home. Hold on, Mr. Yashiki, right? So you're the teacher who's been hitting on those two. Hey, wait! What? <laughs> Playing dumb, I see. I've heard it all from the kids here, you know? They say there's a four-eyed middle-aged teacher. Middle-aged? Who's been hanging around Doryu and Kunakawa an awful lot. Hang on a second. This is... My goodness, how immoral... There have been more and more indecent teachers trying to put their hands on these innocent students. Just a minute already. That's what your intentions are, aren't they? This is getting me nowhere fast. She's prejudiced against me. Why is this happening now of all times? Why could you make her listen to me? I don't know your boss. I'm investigating a case at the request of Mr. Konoe. If you refuse to cooperate, that's your choice, but I'm letting you know that he'll be hearing about it. Are you alright with that? Huh? Well, hold on a second. You're joking, right? Why don't you try calling him and see whether or not he thinks it's a joke? So what are you gonna do? Your call. <sighs> the door manager remains silent. Really mentioning the name Konoe seems to be a pretty effective tactic within the school. <laughs> My apologies. You see, the female dormitory has been getting a lot of weird calls lately. I didn't mean to offend you at all. I'm just taking precautions for the girl's sake. You know that, right? Sheesh, now she's finally willing, willing to listen. So, where are Doryu and Kinokawa? Tell you the truth, both of them haven't returned and it's already past curfew. Excuse me? I always warn the kids that they need to get back by curfew, but they... The door manager offers up a bunch of half-assed excuses. She obviously just doesn't want to be held accountable. Is they actually left after coming back? I let them go since it was before the curfew. I didn't do anything wrong. Did you ask where they were going? 
No, I restricted their privacy. But I distinctly remember that Kinokawa was talking on the phone before she left. Judging by their conversation, I assumed she was invited out by someone. Oh, okay. I'll try looking for them. Ignoring what the door manager attempts to say after that, I immediately hang up the phone. This is bad. Stifling my mounting anxiety, I quickly tried to organize my thoughts. They got a phone call and left the dorm. Luring their target out with a phone call is a trick the party has used over and over again. Knowing that, it's probably a sign that they've been lured back into the school grounds. I need to find them and quickly. The two of them have to be at school somewhere. Where to look first? Come. Place. Connect. Past. Future. The old building. That feeling just now. And that whisper. It's the same voice that told me to pretend to be Mr. Hurose during Slipknot Kashima's case. Come to the place that connects the past and the future. That voice is trying to guide me somewhere. Yush. When blue paper's around, there's a knife damage and red marks. There's something stuffed in the red crack. I need to touch the crack if I want to figure out what it is. This is further investigation. I need to do it. I slowly stick my finger into the crack. It's lukewarm and damp. Ow! <sighs> A sharp pain shoots from my finger. Something's biting me! I yank my finger out to check for an injury. What? Strangely enough, there is no wound. Am I just imagining things? The thing that was stuck in the crack has now fallen to the floor. Toof. Flashlight. Doll. You're... Rose and Maiden. A female doll standing in the darkness. You're... You're the one who called me, right? I force the words on my tense mouth. So, a place that connects past and the future. It must be this corridor that connects the old and the new buildings. What the hell are you? The doll in response of a hollow voice. We simply stand facing each other, both of us motionless as time passes. Meanwhile, Dora and Michio are. I feel uneasy thinking about it. Hey! Why did you call me? P play Play? B? What was she trying to say? Place bell rings. My. The clock tower. I told you. The doll in the red dress disappears, blending into the darkness. What does she want me to tell me? Place where the bell rings, by. Place where the bell rings. What's in there? Oh yeah, clock tower front courtyard. Hmm. Hmm. Something is reflecting the light from my flashlight. This is... Toof. I know I haven't really been here before. Fox. Yes. A massive statue of the Guardian Fox stands here. It's darkened, which gives one the impression that it's been here for quite some time. Foxes might be the messengers of Inari, but this isn't the time to make a wish. Hold on. I take it back. This is the perfect time to wish for their safety. I close my eyes and clap my hands. 
I'll meet you home, Doria will be safe. <laughs> Ow. I keep wondering if the departed's the fox. What was that sound? The fox looked the same as before. Is it just my imagination? Why am I getting the chills in? Suddenly something falls out of the fox's mouth. Tooth. Yosh. The explanation is really confusing and I've got a bad feeling. Are they safe? I need to find them quickly. The place where the bell rings, eh? There's only one possibility. The clock tower. A landmark of Konehara Academy that was built to commemorate the school's 10th anniversary. Having fortunately that escaped the fire ravages of war, it became the symbol of the school along with the old building. The clock stopped working seven years ago. There's no way the bell can ring. But I've often heard the bell since coming here, especially on occasions where the Depart's presence is strong. The bell is ringing. You better not be fan servicing up in there. That scream just now. Was it Doryu? She's nearby. Come inside the clock tower. The door of the grand clock tower is slightly ajar. Almost as if it's beckoning me to enter. I'm going to put my hand on the rusty doorknob. The double doors fling wide open. What exactly am I seeing here? Nope, yeah, you're fan servicing up in here. Both Doryu and Michiho are lying on the floor in their underwear. What the hell happened here? There's mold and bugs. You guys okay? <laughs> Apparently they're okay. Yes. Doryu replies weakly. She can't think straight. Uh, Mr. Yashiki! Michiho groans and calls my name. Can you stand? I don't think they can stand. D don't think so. Can't move my legs and arms. A huge blob is wriggling around them, restraining their limbs. It looks like a mass of slime mold. See, I still think this is just a way to, like... What's the thing? Like I said, get us off the trail. I'm gonna rip it off. Wait! Don't provoke the bugs, they'll bite! A swarm of insects are crawling on their skin. Some are venomous, including the centipedes. If this is the Depart's doing, then these are likely no ordinary insects. There are bound to be massive consequences if I mess this up. These girls could end up like Diamond. <sighs> I better be extremely careful and take things step by step. What should I do first? Michio? First, remove the slime mold that's binding Michio's limbs. Then I carefully brush the bugs from her body. You walk, Michio. But barely. I'll Michio get on her feet and take her out of the clock tower. Thank you. We should be safe here. I'll go help door you now. Wait here. Wait, is this like the choice from NG? I return to the clock tower and perform the same task in the same exact order to help Doryu. Last, I scoop up their uniforms from the floor and run outside with her. Okay, no. Well, that was sure a sticky situation. I close the doors behind me and leave heave a huge sigh of relief. It all went well. While the two are getting dressed, look up at the clock tower. Is it just coincidence that they were put here? I don't think so. There must be a reason for it. And, and a calculated one at that. Because if the part want to kill him, the part would just do it. 
Mr. Yashiki, we're done changing. I have to ask him what happened. Before that, let's go back to the infirmary. Once we arrive, I make them some instant coffee. Both of them sip their drinks in silence. Their faces have regained some color. Looks like they've calmed down a bit. They should be able to talk now. Mr. Yashiki, I'm fine now. Feel free to ask us anything you need to know. That goes for me, too. Despite their trembling voices, they're trying to be strong. Honestly, I'd rather not make these kids recall such painful events, but I don't have any choice. I tend to figure out what happened in the clock tower. Because both of you have been encountered by the major ghosts and have lived. Kinda sus. Tell them about the spirit in the pool. I tell them that I've managed to resolve the situation of the spirit in the pool. Thank you, Mr. Yashiki. To think that spirit was really Takai. So she was murdered by Hanako and then became a spirit. Kind of scared to think about a spirit giving birth to another spirit. Hmm. Takai is the only victim that turned into a spirit. Shinji, who was killed by Kashima, was haunting the gymnasium. I have to wonder if this entire series of awful events was set in motion by the Departed. That's why they came back to the school. The door manager told me you were invited out by someone. Who called you? Uh, it was you. Me. You asked us to help you because you were trapped in the clock tower? So Himi and I went out there. I think that was probably the Departed pretending to be me in order to lure you out. Are you serious? Damn, they're a tricky enemy! Hmm. Ask what happened in the clock tower. The door was open when we arrived at the clock tower. The moment we stepped inside, a swarm of insects attacked us. They were crawling under our uniforms, so we took them off and tried to get the insects off of us. Hmm. I started panicking, and everything went blank after that. Hmm. If they were just normal insects, I wouldn't have been so scared, but I saw some venomous centipedes among them. The limbs refused to move when I tried to escape. And then you came just when we were at the end of our ropes. You really saved our lives. Um, was the part of the one who sent those insects to attack us? Most likely. I saw Noah that they were trying to kill you two. Student council. Why us? I might have an idea why. Do you mind telling us? So I've noticed that the Departed's targets fall into two categories. People who are directly targeted by the Departed, like you were, and those who are targeted by other spirits. Everyone who's been directly targeted by the Departed have all been people I'm close with. Then that means... We were targeted because we're close with you. I think so. Oh, I see. Are we never gonna ask about the mark on our face? I'm sorry, Doryu. Sorry, Michio. You wouldn't have had this horrific experience if I hadn't asked for your help. I'm a curse. I shouldn't have gotten involved in this case. Then Diamond wouldn't have had to go through such a terrible things. My chest tightens its feelings of regret well up inside. But... We were safe because of you. Nor you. You still saved our lives. That's not something that just anyone would have been able to do. You did it because you have the skills. Sound and vocal track. Yep, yep. The other adults don't believe in the departed. You're the only one I can rely on to protect us. So please don't apologize for caring about us. We're really grateful to you. Michio. Thank you. Had to flash back to this scene, huh? Even if they're experiencing many terrible things, they never lose their smiles. They never turn away from the terror lurking in the darkness. Wonder why. Instead, they're trying to fight against it. I don't know if it's because they're brave or have a strong sense of justice. One thing's for sure, though. What those two are doing is not something that just anyone can be capable of. Witnessing their strength resolve has given me encouragement. The two of them shine brightly, like a beacon in the darkness. Mr. 
Mr. Yashiki, there's something I'm curious about. Is the departed really hiding in our school? Yes, Izumi and I said they pretend to be a human. Do you know who they are? No, unfortunately. Hmm. The one conscious foe. Disguising themselves and leaving no clues at all. Mr. Yashiki, would you like to try deducing the departed's true identity with us? Oh, nice idea. Let's give it a shot. Three heads are better than two. Yeah, sure. We better try it. The suggestion piques my interest. Who knows, maybe they actually can feel the departed's presence. So the departed is targeting those who are close to you, right? How would they know your circle of friends and who you're close to, though? Hmm... Since they're a spirit, they might have used their supernatural powers to figure it out. Or they might have discovered it when pretending to be a human at the school. Why don't you try exploring that option? If we assume they're just using powers, that won't leave us any path to deduce anything. There's only a handful of people who know about the Iron Show at the school. Hmm... First up is my client and the headmaster of the school, Mr. Konoe. To support everything related to the case to him, he would have learned a thing or two about me during the process. Next we have the curriculum coordinator, Sakamoto. A serious and cantankerous individual, she might have heard things about me from Mr. Kone and her colleagues. I don't think she might have some connection to the story, but I'm not necessarily sure she's connected to the departed. This guy, no, this guy's just a chuni. Next, the male student named Haru Haruaki Abe. For some reason, he knows a lot about me and my connections. He called me Spirit Doctor, so he may know about the Mark Bears, too. And then we have Himiko Doryu. And Michiho Kunikawa. Both of them have been working with me, so they know I and Show as well. Is it the part among them? If so, who is it? This one. What are you saying? There's no way Michi holds. Calm down, Hime. He's just working through options. You have to consider all possibilities. You know I'm being super friendly toward you. I could be suspicious. You're wrong, though. However, Michiho was targeted by the Departed. She was also attacked when we were investigating Kashima. Doesn't mean anything! It's hard to imagine her as the Departed. I don't even want to consider it. This isn't easy as I thought. I just don't have enough clues to deduce the Departed's true identity yet. I can only press on with the investigation, all the while wondering who are my allies and who are my enemies. Before we realize it, a long time has passed. I can't just keep these girls out when they've already broken their curfew. We better leave the infirmary as soon as we're ready. What kind of excuse should we give to the dorm manager? After closing up the special building, we leave the school. Um, Mr. Yashiki, would you mind sharing more details about this case with us? Maybe we can help you come up with something. Well, you have a point, but... You don't want us to get involved? It's too late for that. We've already been targeted by the Departed. You solving this case is the only way we're going to get our normal lives back. That's why both of us want to help you out. Please let us help, Mr. Yashiki. Fine, all right. All the deaths, grotesque occult phenomena, the fear of being targeted by the departed. My heart is overburdened with all this stress. I want to let it all out. I just want to vent to someone, anyone. So once he's too pressed me, I give in easily. Open up like an unlocked diary, spilling the details of the incidents up to this point, possibly to the culprit. Horror Koshi and Manabe were killed by spirits, Diamond's hospitalization. As well as the female doll and numerous visions she's shown me. Something I'd even tell the Mark Bearers. I guess that's just about everything. Both of them stare at me stunned. They must find it hard to believe. Honestly, it'd be more of a shock if they believed it at all. 
Oh, uh, Mr. Yashiki. That doll in red dress. We know her. Huh? Say what? We saw her before at the clock tower. On the day we received this curse. What curse? I'm not following you. What a turn of events. I have to ask for details. We can finally learn about the dang thing on the face. It was two months ago, during summer break. We went to the clock tower for the school's 70th anniversary project. Oh yeah, when do you guys plan to get the clock tower moving again? Yes, we wanted to inspect the inside of the tower before moving on with the project. That was when we saw a female doll in the red dress placed on the altar. Did the doll move? No, she was just sitting on the altar. It merely gave us both the chills, so we decided to get out of the tower. But it was too late, we were already cursed. The curse. Um... Is it okay if I tell him he may? Sure, go ahead. Only because I'm sure you'll believe us, Mr. Yashiki. Alright. Michio looks serious, which isn't a side of her I've seen often. You can see them, can't you? My white hair and the mark in Hime's face. Yeah, they really stand out. To tell you the truth, other people can't see them. What? Aside from us, the only one who can see them is you. That's impossible, but how? Now that I think about it, there was definitely something off. Doryu's never even tried to hide her mark from the others and none of the mark bearers have ever commented on Michio's white hair. It all makes sense now. It's because I'm the only one who can see them. We've been this way ever since we met that doll. This must be the doll's curse. Why they never mentioned their curse. We actually told the door manager about it before, but she didn't believe us. She thought we were just being weird kids. It was really hard on us. After that, we decided not to speak about it to anyone else. Doryu suddenly cast her eyes downward. Seemed like this has really taken a toll on her Michio. After that, we met you. I thought I noticed you staring at my mark. I was wondering whether you could see it back then. Remember when you compl complimented my hair before? That convinced me you were the only one who could see these things. I was really happy about that. We just said we should talk about with you, but I was afraid. I was scared you'd look at us weird. However, tonight I finally got the courage. I'm not the only one who could see these things, though. Hmm, I'm not too sure about why that is. Aren't there some spiritual occurrences that are only visible to you? Maybe our curse is like that. So this has never affected my gifted supernatural sense. The woes of being cursed. I recall the mark that was carved on my body four months ago. It was a death curse. Undoubtedly, their curse also has the power to bring misfortune upon them. Have you experienced anything strange ever since you got the curse? Like a health condition, hearing or seeing things? Nothing at the moment. I'm not sleep deprived and still have my abnormal appetite. How about you, Hime? I'm fine, too. I knew it. This curse is bad news, right? So if it turns out not to be any of these two girls, then I would say it's what's the name of the uh, rabbit amulet. And if it's not her and it's not the two girls, I mean, other characters could be connected to the thing, but it could just be... Just some other factor we haven't, like, met or known yet. I mean, it's called a curse for a reason. Uh, don't scare me like that! I feel like I've probably gotten all the information I need from them at the moment. Mr. Yashiki, I've been thinking about this for a while, but do you think that the part's true identity is... that doll? No. She put a curse on us, though. Isn't she, like, bad news? That doesn't mean anything. Despite two of the dolls in this series being evil, one of them was not evil. So, not all dolls are evil. I'm sure she's a departed. Evil spirits that were sealed in the clock tower have come out. Because if you're the departed, then you might want to turn me against the doll that's trying to stop you. And I'm sure that was our fault. But she looks different from the departed. If the Departed can transform into a human, they can probably turn into the other things, too. Even this curse of ours is the Departed's doing. That means it should be lifted once they're gone. 
Michio gives an abnormally loud shout. She seems to really believe the female dolls have departed. Sus. She's already investigating spirits in the part when we first met. I understand why she was doing that now. She wasn't my rival, she was trying to find a way to lift her curse. What Michio said is true, the Departs cases are just something that's happening randomly. They're incidents that both of us caused. Doryu. We have to put an end to this case. Please let us help you out. I've learned new information from the two of them. The evil darkness surrounding Konehara Kami continues to deepen. I wonder when that darkness will finally be cleared away and replaced by sunshine. When we arrive at the dormitory, the door manager is waiting for us. Given the fact that they broke the curfew and returned this late at night, it's no wonder she's beside herself with rage. But I've already learned the trick to dealing with her from our earlier phone call. She's only concerned about who is going to be held responsible for all of this. Once I promise her that I won't tell the school about the curfew violation, she takes it down several notches. I say goodbye to Dory Michiho and leave the dormitory. Time to head back to Kujo Mansion. There I start compiling all the reports I need to submit to Mr. Konoe. Come by a cup of sweet coffee. How should I summarize this? If I mention the clock tower incident, I'm going to have to bring up the girls breaking curfew as well. That would betray the door manager and ruin the image of those two students. Guess I should just stick to mentioning the pool ghost. The black telephone rings loudly. Who's calling me this late at night? Hello? Hmm. Kitakawa's here, hello! Oh, I wasn't expecting you to call this soon. Before we part ways, I gave them the number to Kujo Mansion just in case. I just didn't imagine that she'd be using the number this soon. So, why did you call? Ah, I just wanted to hear your voice. Your calm voice makes me feel relaxed. Don't you get that a lot? What are you going on about? Anyway, what do you want to talk about? I have a question for you. Let's say... What if I is a departed? Could you beat her? I is not the departed. Why are you asking something like that? Well, the departed's hiding in our school and we have no idea who it is. I just don't know why I do if Himi turned out to be the departed. Just thinking about it makes me feel depressed. That's why I wanted to talk to you. So could you attack I if she's the departed? I have no choice. I wouldn't be able to. No comment though. This one. I guess that's the only option we have, huh? More people will die if the Departed is allowed to continue existing. We have to take them down. Hmm. <sighs> the only thing I can do for those who have become spirits is to save their souls. Hehe, <laughs> that's so like you. Makes you feel at ease somehow. Hope that helps. Thanks for answering my childish question, Mr. Yashiki. You really are suited to be a teacher. I love that you have that honesty. I still don't trust you. Oops, time to take a bath. Good night, Mr. Yashiki. Good night. Hang up the phone once the conversation's over. I need to wash off my sweat and get some shut eye, too. I collapse onto my bed. When I close my eyes, the smiles of the two girls I saved tonight run from my mind. My tension melts away. For the first time in days, I experience a pleasant bliss of floating to dreamland, unburned by the past few days' events. However, I know this tranquility is fleeting at best. Once a new notice arrives, I'll have to face the specter again. So, that's it for Chapter 4 of Death Mark 2. Kind of an in-between chapter. We did get some more information in the lore, which is key to solving the mystery, although I still am kind of like... It's it's either one of the two girls, or it's the one faculty member, but right now we don't know anything about the faculty member to make any deductions about her. So we have to go on what evidence we see, and I'm still like tagging Michiho here. But who knows? We'll see. She could be normal. But yeah, anyway. 
So if you go off watch you play this chapter, stay tuned for the next one.